Planet Dolan. How much of a watermelon is actually water? What foods have you eating bugs and oil byproducts? Here are 10 things you don't need to know about your food, but you'll be happy that you do. My name is Nixium, and today I'll be your narrator. Number 10. Pound cake is named appropriately. The reason it's called pound cake is because of its original recipe. The recipe, it called for a pound of eggs, butter, sugar, and flour. No other ingredients, just those. The four pound cake was massive, but that's okay, because the idea was the four pound cake was supposed to feed multiple families in an entire neighborhood. Number nine, banana slipping is real. In 2001, Great Britain recorded over 300 occasions of what are officially known as banana-related incidents. And yes, it is exactly what you hope it is. Most of those are in fact incidents of people slipping on banana peels. And it doesn't look like this trend is going anywhere anytime soon, because in 2012, a city hall worker was paid $4,000 in a settlement with his employer for slipping on a banana peel while at work. Number eight. Watermelons are actually water. True to their names, watermelons are made up of 92% water, which is a big part of why they're so heavy. Another 6% of them is sugar, which means that 98% of the watermelon is literally just sugar water. And maybe that is why they taste so good. And a quick bonus fact. In China, watermelon rinds are cooked and eaten as a vegetable. They can be stir-fried, stewed, or pickled. I've never had it, but it might be pretty good. Number seven. Wasabi isn't wasabi. You know that green paste that comes on the corner of your sushi plate, and it kind of burns your nose when you eat it? We generally call that stuff wasabi, but it's not. Wasabi only grows in certain regions of Japan, and it is difficult and pretty expensive to grow and then to process. Worldwide demand for wasabi far outpaces its supply, so whatever wasabi you think you have eaten is most likely just horseradish with green food coloring. Number 6. Tea bags were an accident. While the idea of storing tea in a tiny little paper bag dates back to the 7th century in China, the concept of the modern tea bag was the result of a misunderstanding in the early 20th century. Tea, Earl Grey, hot. Thomas Sullivan owned a coffee and tea shipping company in New York, and he had the bright idea to ship out samples of his products in little tiny silk bags. Now, he intended for people to take the tea out of the little bags when they got them, but they found it easier to just steep the tea in the breathable fabric as it was, and several asked for more shipments exactly like that. However, the rectangular paper tea bags we know today, those were not invented until 1944. Would you like some tea? No. Number five. You are eating bugs all the time. Do you like Skittles? I mean, come on, of course you do. But do you like the red ones especially? Of course you do. Well, hopefully, along with that, you like bugs. Cochineal and carmine are two types of food coloring derived from ground-up tropical insects. And they're used in everything from candy to fruit juice to shampoo. You may find that kind of horrifying, But it's better than the alternative. Many other red food dyes are made from oil and coal byproducts. And at least bugs have some nutritional value. Number four, ranch dressing so white. You ever wonder what makes ranch dressing white? Of course not. It's just white, right? No, it's not true. We don't know any different. But in case you are wondering, which you're not, but I'm gonna tell you anyway, It is titanium dioxide, a substance also used to make sunscreen and paint look whiter. And don't worry, though. Don't worry. They tested the stuff extensively before putting it in your food. Pretty much the conclusion was you would probably need to drown in ranch dressing before you ate enough of it for it to kill you. 
Number three. Heinz's 57 varieties means literally nothing. It's a popular myth that Heinz, one of the biggest food processing companies in America, started advertising 57 varieties because they, at the time, offered 57 products. But actually it had nothing to do with that. Or anything. Because Heinz offered over 60 products when Henry John Heinz came up with the 57 varieties slogan in 1896. So what is the significance of the number 57? Basically, Heinz saw a sign one day advertising 21 different styles of shoes, and he thought it was a good marketing statement. So he thought for a while, and he figured he liked the sound of the number 57. So that's what he used. Th that's literally it. it. It doesn't mean anything. There's no actual varieties of anything. He just thought it sounded cool, so he attached it to all of his products for no reason, and it's still there, 120 years later. I bet you didn't know that. Number two, a group of bananas is called a hand. When you see groups of bananas at your local grocery store, you probably refer to them as bunches. Like, hey, we should grab a bunch of bananas and sue our employer after we slip on the peel. Something like that. A bunch of bananas is a real thing, but that actually refers to the large group of bananas that grows on a tree, like this. Now what you are claiming is a bunch of bananas is more accurately called a hand of bananas. Naturally, if you break one off and have a single banana, that, my friends, that is known as a finger. Kind of creepy. I like it. Number one. Pretzels are crossed because of the Catholic Church. Today, observing Lent tends to be sort of a trendy thing with fairly lenient rules, but in the 7th century in Italy, it was the most serious of business. All types of meat, eggs, and dairy were prohibited, and so a treat of twisted baked dough gained popularity as it required only water, flour, and salt. Monks would hand out the treats to their pupils as a reward when they recited their prayers correctly. Now, the twisted shape is meant to look like crossed arms, the correct posture for prayer at the time. As pretzels gained popularity, the religious symbolism grew stronger, and people assumed that the three holes basically represented the Holy Trinity. So guys, here is a question for all of you, and it is, what is your weirdest food fact? What is the strangest thing that you know about food? Share it with us in the comment section below, and if you impress us, we'll even pin your comment right up at the top. Either way, guys, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again really soon.